the morning of 9-11, like every morning, I would get my daughters up, drop them off at daycare, and then come in here to Bedminster, New Jersey in the Global Network Operations Center. So the morning of 9-11 started as any other day. I came in, you know, as deputy chief of the department, um, went in and had coffee and met with the firemen that I always meet with in the morning. In the morning of September 11th, I was driving into the office uh, when the first plane hit, it came across the radio. The world's trade center is on fire. The whole outside is going to just a huge explosion. We always had news up in the building because we needed to know what was going on in the world. So we knew right away on the news when the first plane hit. I went back into my office. Uh, one of my firefighters came running in and they said, uh, Chief, um, a plane just hit the World Trade Center. So we went to a conference room and turned on the TV. And as we're sitting there watching it, we actually saw the second one hit. Everybody was in shock. We didn't know what to do. I immediately called my mother-in-law and said, you know, go get my kids and bring them home. And um, there was a gentleman sitting next to me. And um, he just had tears streaming on his face because his daughter was there. And he was just terrified. It's pictures in my mind that I'll never forget. I don't talk about it much, but uh, you know, it was real heartbreaking to see all those thousands of people that went to work that morning. Normal day, it was a beautiful day, September 11th, 2001. And uh, they just never came home. You're in the moment. Every public safety person's in the moment. They weren't worried about their own safety or where things were happening. It was in the moment of how do we go save people there? You know, we immediately got into action, right? We looked at the network, on what was happening at the time, and the sheer volume of calls that were going across the network, and how best to handle them. We knew we had a lot of service in South Manhattan, South Battery Street. And we went in there with the idea that, you know, the Trade Center was going to stay up. We, nobody anticipated it collapsing, of course. I was getting calls from other chiefs, and everybody was like, what do we do? Where do we go? And then the ultimate happened, the first collapse, and then the second collapse. And when those happened, communications in New York City also went down. All of us, we were on autopilot. We had very established processes on what to do during disasters. We never imagined this disaster, right? But it's a disaster like all the rest. We started looking at the engineering drawings. We started seeing what we had down there, where it was gonna go, how we were gonna fix it, what were some of the possibilities. Everything that could float from Manhattan across was bringing people that were injured and covered into Hoboken. They're fully covered with this material. What do we do? Do you think there's contamination? So instantly, my team started preparing all the equipment to respond out for that mass decontamination, as we're gonna call it. You know, and then we managed our homes and our children and our family lives. So we did what we needed to do for our customers and for our coworkers and to support the company the best we could. So I was standing there in the street. The fire department came up to us and said, what are you doing? I was holding a fiber map of South Manhattan. And I said, I'm looking for this manhole. And he goes, it's buried. You're never going to find it. And we worked that day, morning till night, until the tide went down and no boats could come in. So I was one of the few AT&T employees that were actually down there on ground zero. The thing that really sticks with me the most is the smell. I can't describe what the smell was like. Also, it was the dust. It was this gray particle dust that we were walking through at Ground Zero. We got to where, you know, the site was, and it was just a big mound, and you just saw the responders up there working and digging and looking for people. It was, you know, something I will never forget. When that siren ran off, that means they found a body. Everybody just stopped. You didn't move. As they pulled the bodies out, they would put it into a, a stretcher with the American flag draped over it. Seeing those first responders up on that hill, it was just overwhelming. 
the sheer dedication of anybody that goes into those disaster areas. It just really brought me a great amount of pride for the small amount of work we could do to support, you know, the country then. There was many actions and many things from 9-11 that changed the way public safety would respond forever. You know, our FirstNet program at at and was born out of 9-11 because of the lack of continuity and communication. And it's been a very mature process that only continues to get better every day because we continue to learn on how best to support these first responder organizations. I think on that day we knew our nation would never be the same and knew that we were just so vulnerable. Who would have imagined that happening, right? And I'm proud of the way the country reacted to it, proud of the way my company, AT&T, reacted to it and gave us what we needed to get the job done. There's family still dealing with loss. We still have firefighters, police officers, responders that day still having health effects because of that day, right? So first off, think about them. I think that's taught me a lot. Um, I don't want to put off tomorrow, um, you know, and tell people, like, especially my family, you know, how much they mean to me and I love them all the time. It is sadness of what happened in the country that day and what happened from an AT&T perspective, but it's also um, 20 years later, right? The companies become more resilient. You know, there's a lot of pride in what we did and there's a lot of hope in um, the future because of it.